In this video, I'm going to show you all you need to know about the Warwick Starbase 2. Hey guys, I'm Tyler and thank you for tuning back into the channel. If you're new around here, consider hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell if you like what I do. So in this video, I'm going to run you through everything you need to know about the Warwick Starbase 2. Uh, this is a base from my own personal collection of bases um, and it's one that I really enjoy, I really like and it's something different um, most importantly. What I'm going to talk about in this review is going to really apply to this base. This is a master built um, custom Warwick star base but it also pretty much applies to the Warwick rock base star base and also the German pro series or the Korean pro series star bases as well. So if you're looking on the second hand market for a Korean one or one of the brand new rock bases, this will probably apply too. In this video I'm going to take you through the different tones you can get from this base, so I'm going to first run through all the specs, what it's made of, which will be slightly different to the, um, depending on which model you're getting, they all have different materials and which range they are, uh, but then I'm also going to run you through the different tones, so we're going to have a look at the tones soloed, and then we're going to have a look at the tone in the context of some drums. And I'm going to put different samples back to back so you can hear the different settings on the bass. So first off, the specs. This is a pretty unique looking star bass and that's because it's one of the master built custom Warwick star basses. So this one was built in 2010. Um, I'm not the original owner or the original person that spec'd it out. But I picked it up uh, four or five years ago. And I've always loved the look of a Warwick Starbase, and I always love the semi hollow body look. I think it's really cool. And so, any base that sports this kind of jazz Epiphone um, Rivoli 335 style look with the F holes, I really like and always want to try out. As this is a custom model, there are a few cool little specs that you won't find on your standard um, Starbase, but the tone remains pretty much the same. I'll discuss that as we get through the video. So the first thing is the bodywood. The bodywood is Babinga. So this is what most of the Warwick star base, custom shop bases are made of. And quite a lot of them aren't finished. It's rare to have a finished one. Um, the default is to have um, natural finished Babinga. The neck wood is Ovencoal. So that's a, a Warwick wood, a typical wood that Warwick have used a lot on different bases. And then the fretboard is an ebony fretboard. Obviously this is a four string model, and then looking at the electronics package, we have volume, volume, and two passive tones for each of the pickups. There is a pickup selector switch as well, so front is this pickup, middle is both, and back is the rear pickup, this one there to the bridge. The pickups themselves are MEC single coil pickups. They are these massive great big silver things that I think are really cool. Being that they are single coil pickups you do get a little bit of hum but I think they sound really good, really fat. Just a lovely pair of pickups to have in a Warwick base. Moving up to the top of the neck we have a Just a Nut 3. So this is Warwick's own nut which is highly manoeuvrable. You can change the height of the strings at the nut which is a really nice feature to have on a base and really helps with your setup. Um, and I wish kind of more people had these on their bases. The tuners are Warwick's tuners, really solid, really good, no problems with those at all, and pretty decent ratio. And then the bridge is Warwick's 3D bridge, really like this as well. So you can move the string spacing, so you can move the bridge side to side within each saddle. You can obviously move it front and back, and then you can move the height up and down. So that's where the 3D element comes from. It's all milled from solid brass and this has the chrome finish and the actual bridge piece sits here in the body as you've probably seen on many Warwicks. The scale length is 34 inch scale so from the bridge saddle here to the nut it's 34 inches. Also has Warwick's invisible fret technology which are these goldy coloured frets and they feel really good. Really like them, no problems at all with those. They're quite a large size, I don't think they're particularly small, um, but they aren't tall or narrow or anything like that. I know some people really dislike tall narrow frets, these are more of your traditional fret. Being that this is a custom shop model, there are a few little extras that this base has that you wouldn't find on the cheaper models, and one of those is the inlays. So these inlays are Mother of Pearl with an abalone triangle, abalone, abalone, one or the other, triangle in between each of the two Mother of Pearl blocks. For some people that might be a bit blingy, but I really like it. I like white bases, and any block inlays are really cool in my book. 
One thing I should mention that is different, particularly uh, for a star base and other bases that are in the semi-hollow construction compared to most of the bases that I show you guys on my channel, is that this is a set neck base. So the neck is glued in rather than bolted in. And another feature is that this has a tone block running all the way through the centre of the body. So effectively from the neck all the way through to here is there is solid wood underneath it. They're not they're two pieces still, as I said it's a set neck so the neck is still attached um, but the body itself has a solid piece of wood through it and that is to stop feedback and give you a little bit more of that electric tone, that solid sound that we're used to but you still get the effect of the semi-hollow construction and a little bit more. So it's a different way that the sound produces itself and blooms and I, I really like that about semi-hollow bases. The final thing that I think is worth mentioning is that on the back of the body here you have a cavity that is easily openable so it's got plastic uh, clips that you just pull out and then inside the cavity you have access to all the electronics so if you wanted to put in a preamp or do something there is the space to do it they've given you the option there and it's not too difficult to get to an access. So if you are looking at this video and you're looking at say the rock base version or the pro series version the only differences you're going to find are that the necks have wenge fingerboards so that's a slightly different feel. Ebony's a lot brighter and punchier attack. Uh, I think wenge has a little bit more of the mid-range sound it's a little bit more compressed sounding overall. The other difference you may find is that the cheaper star bases will have maple bodies rather than babinga but that is going to give you a slightly different tone but for the majority I feel the tone that this video will represent is the same tone you're going to find on those cheaper star bases. One thing I always like to mention is the neck profile and the neck profile on this base is pretty small and slim. I'd say it's definitely a D-shaped neck, it feels more like a D-shape to me but really quite a small neck, no real size at all, jazz bass-esque but with a slightly different shape compared to the jazz bass C-shape you're used to. One criticism I would have of this bass is that it can be sometimes quite difficult to get comfortable with it. Lee Sklar plays these basses uh, regularly and he has had his own model come out which is the Sklar bass too. But the top of the body has been cut away so you have a slight angle across the top um, that allows your hand to rest a bit more naturally like it would on a solid body bass. I definitely feel like that can be a little bit of an issue sometimes in certain positions with the star bass. As you can see here I've got it quite high up on a strap so it's quite high on the body which allows it to sit right in the middle of me and I can you know really keep this wrist fairly straight but I do think there's a little bit more of an angle that happens when I play the star bass compared to other basses. The other thing is as a result of that and the body being large this side of the bass always kind of has this issue I think and the fact it's a long scale bass that means that it's quite a stretch away over here to the left to get down to the first position. Something that's worth noting, if you're buying one of the rock bases, that issue isn't quite the same because it's a 32 inch scale, so it's a medium scale base, which means you're going to lose an inch. So pretty much the first fret, that's kind of the extent of where your, your nut would be, just that kind of range, which makes it a little bit more comfortable, a little bit easier. The other thing is that when you take the strap off, so I'll just take the strap down for a second, put the base on, the, on your lap, you need to be sat on a chair that doesn't have anything underneath it really um, and I still think that you kind of need to have the base angled up here to make it comfortable. If you do sit on a sofa like this and try and play it, as you can see there I've got a gap beneath my leg in the base so then you end up with this odd neck dive because the body's so wide. So if you're sat on an office chair or I've done geese in restaurants and things and sat on a chair from the restaurant and that's not a problem, it just sits nicely over the knee. But just something to be aware of, I can't really play this sat down, say on this sofa, for longer than 15 minutes before it becomes uncomfortable. I start twisting and trying to twist the base here in these positions and then my usual posture of kind of more straight sitting just doesn't really happen. I'm kind of out here or, or out here and the legs are all over the shop. So not really that comfortable. So I advise, if you can, get a, a good strap and raise it up so that it sits comfortably up here. It's quite a Thundercat style look. His Ibanez is massively heavy and I don't quite know how he does it, but he positions his base in this kind of position with that outstretch. It's kind of the best way to go if you're playing a semi-hollow body base in this style 
and of this kind of size. I also find that playing on the bridge pickup is not quite so easy with this bass. I naturally want to sit over that front pickup. I think just based on the angle and the height of this upper bout on the bo top of the body, just kind of naturally wants to sit there. You can play in there, but then you start to get this quite bent. If you see that, that's kind of the angle that the wrist's at, which isn't really comfortable. Kind of nestling it around there is an option. But it's not perfect for me. I'm still really working out how to play with perfect technique on this bass. And I've had it a few years. It's not a bass that I play constantly, but when I do play it, I do really enjoy it. But there are just a few little, a little niggles and things that aren't quite as natural as playing a typical solid body bass. Um, just a few challenges, but the sound is worth it. So let's get into that and talk about that and demo some of the sounds. One of the things I have on this bass is flat wound strings. So this bass originally comes with round wound strings. I didn't really enjoy the round wound strings. I tried some different round wound strings, my usual Dunlop super bright strings, and they didn't really work for me either. And I was very close to selling this bass for that reason. But I've put on Labella low tension uh, flexible flats, and these strings are really great, and they sound really cool with this bass. For that reason, this video is gonna be a little bit different because I'm not gonna do so much of the slap stuff. The, the demo at the end won't have slap stuff. What I'm gonna do is show you how I use the bass and the tones that I think it's really cool for. Typically a semi-hollow body, you're gonna you know, hark back to things like a Hofner um, or Fender Coronado or those kind of bass guitars. And those are the really the uses that I have for this. I play quite a few chordy things on it. I quite like that sound. I also like to pop some foam under the bridge to give you those really old school fat flat wound tones. And outside of that, some pick stuff if I need it, but really this is an alternative recording bass. So with that in mind, I'm just gonna show you a few different tones that are all of that ilk, generally gonna be more towards the old school type of sound. So this is both pickups on full, pickup selector right down the middle and tone all the way open. Then just going to roll the tone off on both of those pickups. One of the things I really like with a passive tone setup where you have two volume controls and two tone controls is the ability to mix them and blend them. I haven't shown you any of this in the tone demo at the end of the video because there are so many options with it. But what I'm going to do is just give you an idea of that now and kind of put it in your brain, plant that little seed of the options you have with this. If you watch my Squire Jaguar video that I did not that long ago, this is a similar concept to what I was talking about there. So I'm going to take the bridge pickup I'm going to turn the tone all the way up. I'm going to take the volume down a little bit, so it's kind of 70% of the volume. Turn the front pickup all the way up, and turn the front pickup tone all the way down. This is with both pickups on. This is that kind of tone. Now I'm going to switch those around. So full on the bridge pickup, 70% on at the front pickup, front pickup tone all the way up, bridge pickup tone all the way down. As you can see there, absolutely massive difference in tone with just a few small tweaks and balance of the front pickup and the back pickup. One of my favourite tones on this bass is to have the front pickup and back pickup all the way up but to have the back pickup tone all the way up and the front pickup tone all the way off. This gives you that round front pickup -y depth and, and warmth, kind of like a Gibson EBO type sound where it's nearer the neck, that really dark mud bucket type tone, and then some real definition from the bridge pickup. <laughs> I think the passive electronic system and the big pickup covers are really beneficial in terms of 
making your fingers translate the sound and really craft the tone. If you place your thumb on the back pickup, you know, it's a really big area thanks to that large pickup case. You can get that bridge pickup sound, so um, that Jacko type sound, tone all the way up, volume all the way up, and just on the back pickup. Jacko type sound, switch to the front pickup, roll the tone all the way off, and you can get that fat, warm, classic tone. When I've played this bass in a jazz context, people have really loved it. A lot of people get really funny about jazz uh, tones, particularly horn players, and they really want that upright sound. I personally would rather play jazz on an upright. But if I don't have that chance, or you're playing in a tiny restaurant, or you know, you're just playing there, for some reason you can't get your up right there, I think this can do a really good job. So I've put a little bit of foam under the bridge. If you use double bass style technique and kind of play more parallel to the strings, I think you can get a pretty passable upright sound. And I've had so many compliments from horn players on this tone. <laughs> So those are just a few of the options. Let me know what you're thinking of this bass in the comments below right now. And if this video is helping you or you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that like button. That really helps me. Don't underestimate how helpful that is. This next section is the tone demo with drums so you can get an idea of how the different settings on this bass sound and really show you the wide variety of sounds you can get from what is a really simple setup. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now you've got a good idea of some of the tones that this bass can produce, let me know what your favourite setting was in the comments below. I'm just going to talk you through how I use this bass, where I think it fits and how it might be useful for you and then that 
concludes the video. So for me, this bass is a really versatile option, especially considering how simple it is. Passive tone, passive electronics, just a semi-hollow body construction. Great, great bass and amazing versatility. I don't ever want to understate how great I think having two volumes and two tone controls can be. I really think there's a whole wide range of sounds in there that you just don't need the active electronics that you find on many other basses. As I said earlier, I think there are some drawbacks with this bass. I think in terms of its size, the practicality of it, it can sometimes be a little bit uncomfortable to play for extended periods. But as I said, if you're in the right position and you've worked it out and you sit on a chair that doesn't have any edges or anything and you can just rest the bass on your knee, it can really do a great job. And similarly, if you can get it on a strap and really get it close to the body, it's a great feeling bass as well as pretty comfortable. I personally really enjoy a semi-hollow body instrument. I really like the acoustic feel of instruments in general, and that's one of the things I look for with a solid body bass as well. And I think that's a really nice touch. This makes a great bass to sit and practice with unplugged as well as plugged in. And I think the range of tones it can get are pretty phenomenal. And the fact that I've had so many compliments from different players People that don't really ever make a comment about bass tone or anything, some of them have really, really enjoyed this bass and, and really made a big thing of it. A lot of people have said with the flat wounds that this does sound very upright bassy, and I can definitely see where they're coming from. I think if you're an actual upright player, you know that the attacks can be a little bit different. But if you pop um, some foam underneath the bridge, you can really get pretty close. And as I say, playing closer over the neck, and with a, a slightly more side of the finger style. It's very passable in a jazz context. And then at the same time, you can then move to the bridge pickup and get a little bit more of a cut and a little bit more of that, that mid-range tone that you want when you're soloing and trying to cut across and be melodic in a band. I'd primarily suggest this bass for someone who wants the versatility of a range of old school type tones. It's pretty much got a P sound in there, it's got a J sound in there, and both pickups together, two single coils, it's pretty much a jazz bass. If you want that versatility in a passive setup and you like those kind of tones, I think this bass is a really great tool to have in the arsenal and could, if I'm honest, be the only bass you need. For me, this primarily replaces the P bass with flat wounds. I have my P bass now strong with round wounds and with flat wounds, this does a great job of that P bass tone with the front pickup on and using the tone control to blend how much of that treble I want in there and how much of that extra bass boost you want from the passive tone control roll off. Ultimately, if you're a fan of old school passive tones, I think this is a really versatile option to have in your arsenal. But if you're looking for something that's really bright with a lot of punchy attack and really cuts through a mix, I would suggest this isn't probably the base for you. So those are my conclusions on the Warwick Style Base 2. Let me know what your thoughts are on this base in the comments below. Don't forget to head over to my Instagram page and follow me. There I keep up to date with my latest base stuff. Obviously videos are only twice a week. So make sure you head over there to keep up to date with all that I'm doing constantly. It's all base related content there, so check that out. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, these in-depth base reviews, head over to the channel and hit subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell too. If this video has helped you out, hit that like button because that really helps me get this video out to more people and hopefully grow the channel. That's everything from me on the Warwick Starbase 2. Keep tuning in and I'll see you around soon.